Sri Guru Raja orchestrates things in his own way. Sri Sudhyanendra Tirtha, the 13th pontiff, reckoned from Sri Raghavendra in that illustrious lineage, stood before the Moola Brindavana at Mantralaya, praying to Sri Raghavendra that he should ever be near him. His longing was that he should enter his Brindavana proximate to Sri Raghavendra in Mantralaya itself. But Sri Raghavendra caused his going to Nanjangud, uh, where several mysterious things as engineered by Sri Raghavendra took place, culminating in the installation of Sri Sudhyanendra as of an idol of Sri Raghavendra at Nanjangud. After that, Sri Sudhyanendra entered his Brindavana at Nanjangud itself. And these happenings have already figured in detail in part 2 with illustrative pictures. In fact, Sri Raghavendra had also orchestrated Sri Sudhyanendra's Aradhana to immediately follow his and to grace him such honours he had masterminded diverse events encompassing the lives of many which are truly amazing. Yes, if Sri Guru Raja's deeds are analysed in the proper perspective, the enigma shrouding those can be discerned intelligibly. Let us now delve into the events that follow. Sri Suyamindra became the 20th Pitatibadi, reckoned from Sri Raghavendra in the year 1933, more than seven decades after Sri Sudhyanendra's pontificate had come to an end. During Sri Suyamindra's period, numerous Mritika Brindavanas had been installed by him at various places. But strangely, at certain centres, Sri Raghavendra had, with deliberate intent, changed the course of events, despite the earnest efforts of Sri Suyamindra for such pratishtabana and consecration. In uh, Chitaldru, as seen already, even after the sculpting of the Brindavana for pratishtabana, it was finally kept concealed under the ground because it had a crack in it. Once, Sri Suyamindra took some Moola Mritika in a Samkuta with the prayer, Guru Raja, since it had occurred to me to take you to the places of my Sanchara in your Mritika Rupa, I have taken this Mritika from your Moola Brindavana without any specific plan to consecrate it at some place. Its Pratishtapana is not in my hands, nor is it known to me as to when it would take place. It's for your grace, Sri Raghavendra, that I pray for, and left Mantralaya on a Sanchara. It needs no explication here that it was Sri Raghavendra who had caused that to happen. Sri Suyamindra was performing puja to that Mritika throughout his journey, and lastly reached Nanjangur. It occurred to him then that its Pratishtabana could be done there. But before the Pratishtabana, Sri Suyamindra wanted to seek enlightenment from Sri Raghavendra about the proposal that he had in mind to avoid any last-minute disappointment and sat in meditation over that. However, he could not have any guidance from Sri Raghavendra at that point of time and as such the matter was left undecided. Next morning, Sri Raghavendra appeared in the dream of Sri Suyamindra and affectionately addressing him as Suyamindra proffered his advice which left Suyamindra wondering and consoling himself. O oh, Guru Raja, whatever we think and whatever you really cause to happen are at variance many a time and whatever things you do, there will undoubtedly be some hidden meaning in those. Sri Suyamindra from then onwards followed meticulously whatever Sri Guru Raja had enlightened him to carry out. Let's now get back to uh, Margayan Kote. Yes, that is the name of the village that was figuring all along in the earlier chapter. During Rani Mangamma's rule, she had gifted a place each to Margayan, Kuchayan, and Kulayan. Those places subsequently developed into habitats and such villages came to be identified by the respective names of the beneficiaries. 
that way margayan's kotai became margayan kotai according to the version of the lo local population sachanur and kulanur too got, uh, got their identities in a like manner we have seen thus far that at the place got by the margayan kotai madhva sangha partly as benefaction and some portion by purchase consideration a thatched construction was put up after 6 years for holding bhajans and worshiping sri raghavendra sri m v setu rao was since long doing puja to sri raghavendra mrtika kept in a small, uh, small brindavana in his puja room on 8 10 1981 early in the morning with the playing of auspicious notes on musical instruments the mrtika from his house was brought by the devotees in a religious procession and kept in the thatched confines in the madhva sangha land in a shastrik manner thereafter daily pujas were performed to it in an orthodox way the public of the place felt elated that the placement of the miniature brindavana there was something like having really got a majestic brindavana installed at the place daily worship pradakshna namaskara and the singing of bhajans commenced and became a routine there yes there was always the eager expectation amongst the devotees as to when sri raghavendra would make his advent and get ensconced ensconced there it was madurai n ramakrishna rao who brought from the house of the madhva sangha president and kept that small brindavana in that thatched confines for the worship of devotees and it was under his personal supervision that the garbhagriha as a permanent structure was constructed later the public contributions the brindavana fashioning was also completed but it was a million dollar question as to when the holy mrtika pratishthapana will take place the devotees did not however rest with their efforts and with the available funds a hall and a kitchen were constructed naming the hall as sri ananda teertha mandir in june 1983 it was inaugurated for public use by the pejavara mata pita adipati sri vishveshwara teertha sri padangalavaru following that with the funds provided by the devotees a permanent garbhagriha was also constructed the brindavana complex thus getting completed though the building the brindavana and an anjaneya idol was were all ready it was only the small brindavana that continued to be worshiped in the garbhagriha while so in 1986 the marga and kotai madhva sangha members went as a group to mantralaya and after worshiping sri raghavendra's mool brindavana and paying obeisance to the pontiff placed their request for mrtika with the with the mantralaya mat authorities the mantralaya mat authorities as a first step asked the madhva sangha members how much funds they had for the running of the mrtika brindavana the members replied that most of the amount had been spent for construction and only a small portion remained with them the authorities said that it was not sufficient to meet the requirements of running a mrtika brindavana and as such moola mrtika cannot be given to them and that they can come later with adequate backing of funds the group returned disappointed but with the consolation that perhaps the time was not yet ripe for sri rai ru's advent at their place here it needs to be clarified that the mantralaya mat does not demand any funds for it in the instant case the authorities concerned concerned had only asked how much funds the madhva sangha had with it for such funds are required for the uninterrupted functioning of the mrtika brindavana establishment to meet particularly the expenses for daily puja hastodaka etc this aspect has been dealt with elaborately in part 3 which readers may recall here the marga and kotai madhva sangha members placing their faith on sri guru raja started collecting funds 
for investment in a fixed deposit. But even after several years, the collection drive had not yielded sufficient funds. The members at one stage felt highly dispirited and soulfully prayed to Sri Guru Raja to show them a way. It was June 1987. Sri Parimala Raghavendran, son of uh, Harikatha Kesari, Sri V. S. Venkatramana Rao, had come to Marga and Kotai at that time, as his mother belonged to that place. Sri Parimala Raghavendran, based in Chennai, was at that time doing divine service, helping also the society around him, around him in several ways. He was known for his philanthropy and would most willingly help any worthy cause, his contribution invariably exceeding the expectation of those seeking such help. In fact, he had come forward to meet the entire cost of publication of part one of this serialized writing in English. But since I was of the conviction that I should not accept any do donation for my publications, I tactfully explained my position to him then and he concurred with my stand. In about 10 years or so, at that point of time, his donations to various much and for the reserve deserving causes cannot be estimated with precision, they being so numerous and involving sizable amounts. When Sri Parimala Raghavendran of such magnanimity had come to Marga and Kotai, the Madhva Sangha members utilized that opportunity to place their problems before him. They apprised him of the sad events that had shaken the village in 1972 and how in 1974 his father Sri V.S. Venkatramana Rao during his discourse there had expressed his desire and also blessed the devotees of Marga and Kotai that soon Amritika Brindavana of Sri Raghavendra should become a reality there. Sri Guru Raja being a spiritually pa powerful saint radiating his grace and all and being one beyond petty considerations like caste, creed and religion. They also narrated to him how the land was got by the Sangha, how pujas were being performed to the miniature Brindavana and how Mantralaya Mutt authorities had advised them that only with adequate funds at the command of the Madhva Sangha, the Moola Mritika could be released for consecration in a Brindavana at their place. In conclusion, they told Sri Parimala Raghavendran with utmost feelings that the auspicious beginning made by his progenitor Sri V. S. Venkatramana Rao should have the blessings of Sri Raghavendra and that a sum of rupees 1 lakh at least was required for their efforts to fructify. Sri Parimala Raghavendran, after thinking for a while, asked the members whether the Mrittika Brindavana Pratishtabana could be had on 3-7-1987. Stunning everyone! He then continued, Please devote your attention now to whatever arrangements are required for that which surprised the Madhva Sangha members even more. And when the members came back to normalcy from their pleasant shock, they observed hesitantly, there are only 15 days left for the third of the next month. Let it be. It is not going to be a big challenge. Please take up the work at once. We have to collect the funds for that. And even if that should be got, more importantly, the Mrittika has to be obtained. If the date is fixed and we approach the Mantralaya Mutt authorities, will they give us the Mritika? Don't worry about the money, please. Forget also about the problem of getting the Moola Brindavana Mritika. Please start at once preparations for the other things connected with the Pratishtavana, said Sri Parimala Raghavendran, silencing everyone in utter wonderment. He continued, Don't ask me any further questions. I shall take up the responsibility for those. Immediately following this, Sri Parimala Raghavendran got in touch with Sri Raja Guru Rajacha, who was in Bangalore. The Sangha members contacted at the same time Sri Rangam Hariachar uh, about the uh, religious rituals to be arranged. 
these efforts ultimately bore fruit on 37-1987. Prabhavaya uh, Ashada Masa Shuddha Sap, uh, Saptami. When the pontiff of uh, socialist Sri um, Vyasaraja Mat, Sri Vidya Bayonidi Tita Sri Padangalavaru performed the Pratishtabana of Sri Raghavendra Swami's Mrithika Brindavana that took place on a grand scale in Marga and Kote. Later, the conclusion of the Mandala Puja was performed by the holy hands of Sri Vidyanidhi Tita Sri Padangalavaru, the Pita Tipadi of Sri Padaraja Mat on 15-8-1987. Readers may wonder, may be wondering how I have written about the later events in just one para and why the happenings of the intervening days have not been touched upon. It should of course be obvious that the required amount was got through Sri Parimala Raghavendran. But within the short time at their disposal, the Sangha members could not have produced a fixed deposit receipt to the Mantralaya Mat and got the Mritika from there. In fact, it was not necessary for them to do that. And the Pratishtabana at Margin Kote did take place as planned and on the date fixed. Of course, with the Mula Mritika, how this happened will be known in the next chapter that will leave us wondering at Sri Guru Raja's orchestration. <laughs>